Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com, and welcome to the update for the Major League Baseball All-Star Break. This will be our only video up for this week up until Friday morning, July 12th, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific, when we get back into the swing of things with Major League Baseball. But this is my NFL over-under wins total recap video. Last couple of months, we did all the NFL teams, every single one of them. We talked about their upcoming season thumbnail sketch. We had seven over-under plays, and I'm going to give those to you in just a moment, all right here on this particular video. Video. And again, this video will be up until Friday morning, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific time. That's Friday, July 12th, as we get back into the swing of things in baseball. As far as WNBA, 69% winning run last 16 plays. They're off on Monday. They play on Tuesday of the All-Star break, just one game. They've got a big slate on Wednesday. We'll be playing and betting on WNBA just like normal during the break. So be able to check those things out over at DocSports.com each and every day uh, during the All-Star break. CFL, as normal. Normal. That'll be posted on Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. You'll be able to grab my CFL for the upcoming week. 75% on the season, up over $1,200 for $100 per unit players in the CFL. And again, baseball will likely return on Friday. I know there's a game on Thursday. I don't think we're going to be involved in that. Uh, but Friday, you know, we'll have the pitching matchups. We'll have the lines well before Friday. And I'm sure we'll be back in action. But whether we're in baseball action coming up on Friday or not post All-Star break, I will have a video on Friday. Friday morning. All right, here's the deal. I'm going to give you those seven over-under wins totals in the NFL that I played throughout the course of the last couple of months. We're talking about all the teams and their thumbnail sketches for the upcoming season. If I do add any more plays, any over-under wins totals, any futures at all in the NFL uh, between now and the start of the NFL regular season, we will definitely update you on our video the day we make those plays. So rest assured, you'll get them all. As far as my NFL over wins totals are concerned, here's the the recap we've got seven starting with the Baltimore Ravens over under wins total when we played it eight and a half it was a buck 30 on the under and listen maybe Harbaugh and his staff can figure this thing out for Lamar Jackson get him on the same page but uh, listen he had the second worst mark as far as off target passes go last season his rookie season I know he was thrown into the mix I know he wants to run the ball too much maybe they can work on that a bit and get him to be more of an NFL style quarterback uh, it's been reported elsewhere I'm not the first one to say that this certainly did say it a couple of months ago when we were talking about Baltimore in this particular division but let's not forget how good uh, the defense was last year but the offense though un averaging less than two full touchdowns per game a year ago so you've got an inaccurate quarterback an offense that couldn't even reach two touchdowns per game on average when he played so there's a lot of work to be done on the Baltimore Ravens the defense that I started to allude to a little bit they were great last year they did lose a ton of talent listen I like what they did in the draft for the most part talking about the Baltimore Ravens I think they scored highly in the draft but I think it's going to be a season where they struggle I'll be shocked if they get to nine wins which would put them over that eight and a half listen I think they're going to go three and four through their first seven games that's not too bad obviously uh, but I think they're going to hit the skids over the final nine games and I'm looking at seven wins out of Baltimore at the best so we are going to play under or we did play under Baltimore eight and a half wins next up the Indianapolis Colts over under wins total nine and a half and listen uh, as far as this team is concerned, that offensive line is going to make it so tough on opposing defenses to get to Andrew Luck. It's just what they do. And when Andrew Luck has been healthy, the Colts have won a whole lot of football games over the past couple of seasons. Andrew Luck is not going to be under heavy pass rushes if all goes according to plan and according to the talent in the trenches up front on offense for the Indianapolis Colts. He's not going to taste grass on the road. He's not going to be sitting and laying on the carpet, staring up at the roof at home. Uh, uh, the only place the defense has to get better really is the pass rush. Uh, they need to be better than the second half of the league, which is what they were last year. They don't have to be top five, but they have to be decent. They have to be top 15, I would think, on defense as far as the pass rush is concerned. I do like what Indy did in the draft. Uh, they have gotten a steal, I think, at the 46 pick uh, with that kid Rocky Asen, the corner out of Temple. I think he's going to help shore up the pass rush when they do decide to rush uh, from the deep backs. And I also think he's going to be a guy who can make some noise rather early in his NFL career. I also like what they did with the linebacker situation with Indy in the draft. Schedule starts tough. There's a chance they could be two and three out of the blocks. I think they're going to go three and two, though, first five. And if you look in those five games, they've got roadies at the Chargers, the Titans, road game at KC, a couple of homers against Atlanta and Oakland. Those aren't in exact order, but they are the first five games for the Indianapolis Colts. 
Even if they start two and three, I think they go two and six, or 10 and six overall. I really think they're going three and two out of the blocks. And I have the Colts, as long as luck stays healthy, going 11 and five. I like the over nine and a half with Indy. Kansas City was the first team we talked about when we started doing these a couple of months ago, and we told you that we were playing under 10 and a half wins. Listen, they've got one of the six or seven most difficult schedules in the NFL uh, this upcoming season. Three of their first four games of the year are on the road, and check out the run in weeks five through 11. Uh, they've got games at home against Indy and Houston. They're at Denver. That's a win. They're home against Green Bay and Minnesota. They've got a game at Tennessee, Homer against the Chargers before they finally draw their bye week week and then two of their final four games of the season are at New England and at the Chicago Bears. That's not really a conducive schedule to winning 11 or 12 games. They of course lost D Ford. They lost Justin Houston from the Chiefs. That was a defense that was one of the worst in touchdowns allowed per game. Second worst in yardage allowed per game and I don't think they're going to be up to last year's measures when you look at some of the players they've lost. As much as I like Patrick Mahomes just like the rest of you guys over the last decade grab this off off the net. Teams that scored at least 60 touchdowns in a season, well, the very next season, they had serious drop-offs in that same category, and you can understand why. Uh, KC is the sixth offense to be in this position over the last decade. Best case scenario for me for KC, 10 wins. I, I think probably nine or 10 is going to be best case scenario for this team this year. And with that total being 10 and a half, the schedule I mentioned, I think uh, it's a good spot to play KC under 10 and a half, which I did. And uh, if you agree with this play, then jump on board. Miami Dolphins, five wins. Bad news for Miami fans. The Dolphins have dumped veteran players that they were already a team that was going to struggle to win six games. And they go out and uh, dump some veterans that could have helped with the players they've dumped and those who will be filling in the gap, so to speak. I'll be shocked if the Dolphins can win more than four games this upcoming season. They draw Baltimore at home, New England at home. First couple of weeks, they should go one and one. Uh, a win over the Ravens, not a far stretch. It'll be interesting to see if they continue to win games at home against New England. But, you know, maybe week two for New England, they're a little bit more ready to go for Miami, although New England has struggled early season the last few years under Belichick. But listen, they traded for Josh Rosen, knowing that Ryan Fitzpatrick is little more than a stopgap quarterback. Uh, they drafted Kristen Wilkins. He should make an immediate impact up front on defense. But again, heavy rebuild mode for Miami. I got him winning four games on the upcoming season. So we're going to play Miami under that wins total. Speaking of unders, the Oakland Raiders, man, the NFL schedule makers said, okay, you only won four games. Now we're going to throw arguably the most difficult schedule at you. Uh, they might find it tough to stand one and four after five weeks of action. And man, they've got a long season with their bye week coming in week six. We think they've got a shot to win the home opener against the Denver Broncos before suffering four straight losses before the bye week. That's what we've got them at. And, and when you check out the rest of the slate for Oakland, it looks like a four-win season, maybe five. I, I can see five wins out of this team. I like this year's targets. Who doesn't, right? you got Terrell Williams, J.J. Nelson. Keep Antonio Brown happy. He'll help. But I can't stand this Raider defense. They had no pass rush last year. I don't think they're going to have much of a pass rush in 2019. We like the Oakland Raiders under six wins. Uh, Seattle Seahawks, eight and a half, juice kind of heavy, minus a buck 40 on the over, but we laid the juice on the over. Uh, I agree that that's the way to go. I think Tyler Lockett has developed and will be a major player in how Seattle fares, I really do. Uh, but this will be a run and run some more offense like Seattle wants to be. But play action will be a key weapon because of that. And Seattle has that arsenal to work with. Uh, the offensive line will be better than we saw the last couple of seasons. And I think they'll pave the way for Seattle's desired brand of offense. As far as defense is concerned, love the middle of the defense. I like the secondary. They should be extremely tough. Decent up front to be sure on the stop unit. Uh, going to be tough to move the ball consistently on the Seattle Seahawks if you don't have a well-oiled machine on your offensive attack. Now the schedule... I've actually got Seattle going 7-3 and three into their Week 11 bye week. They'll likely lose at Philly and at the Rams down the stretch, but they've got three very winnable games in their final five. I've got Seattle going 10-6, and six, over under is 8.5. We played over with Seattle, laid a little bit of that juice. And finally, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, six and a half wins. Do you realize that Tampa Bay has won more than six games just one time in the last half dozen seasons? It's now been 16 and a half years since the Buccaneers beat the Raiders in Super Bowl 37. Since then, right, yeah, they have 100 wins and 156 losses. 
That's 391 football since the start of the 2003 regular season. I expect another tough year in 2019. We can start with that defense. It's a unit that's been quite permissive, uh, both on the scoreboard and other areas for most of the last eight years. They did hire Todd Bowles at defensive coordinator, uh, but his last few defenses haven't been that good. Maybe if he can refocus on just defense, he can get back on track as a DC. They don't have a pass rush to start the season. Uh, Bruce Arian says the secondary is fixed. I'll believe that when I see it. Offensively, I do like the wide receiver core, but I'm not a Jameis Winston fan. Uh, he's too inconsistent for me, despite putting up better numbers last year. Uh, and who's going to run the football? Ronald Jones? I mean, listen, the schedule has a shot for a decent start out of Tampa Bay. I, they could be 3-3 three and three after their first six games, yet even if they go 3-3, three and three, I still have them winning just five games on the year. I like Tampa Bay under 6.5. And, and again, I think that I'm going to repeat that, that record. Since the start of the 2003 regular season, Tampa Bay, 100 wins, 156 losses. That's 39% winning football. That's it for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. One more tough season, I think, before they get it into gear. All right, that's going to do it for our NFL wins totals. Again, we're in WNBA action all week long during the break. We'll be in the CFL. Those will post on Thursday, normal time, 6 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back with our next video on Friday, July 12th, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific time. I don't mess around with the baseball all-star game. I don't get involved with any of the activities, the home run derby or any of that. So there'll be no baseball until at least Friday. Anyway, I uh, hope you like these uh, over under wins totals. Hope you agree with some of those. And again, if we add any to the mix over the next oh, six, seven weeks before the start of the regular season, we'll be sure to tell you on those videos. All right. I'm Scott Spritz or DocSports.com. Let's put this next week in the win column right back here Friday morning.